works. Um, it works. Look at the 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 like part <laughs> around my shoulder that's like in focus. Yep. That's not distracting at all. Can I do it on this side? Oh, it's very much. It's only if it lives within the fingers, so I can. All right, hit me, producer pots. Collagen, collagen, collagen. It is all over my social media feeds these days. But then I hear this thing, but it's not a complete protein. So please, can you tell us what is the deal with collagen? Is like the collagen powders we see everywhere, is that really like a must have, especially for us females? But like, and then what's the deal with comp complete protein? Because I like, is it that bad that it's not a complete protein? And also is collagen like, do we need to have it basically? Um, this, there's so many parts to this question. So, um, <laughs> let me start with what a complete protein is, because I think yeah. that'll help us like come down into talking about the collagen land. Collagen, because collagen is pretty cool. Like it is legit a, a cool thing to, to get. So, um, what a complete protein, mean, like what that means is it means that that food has good amounts of all nine of the essential amino acids. So there's 20 amino acids that our bodies use to make all of the proteins that we we are made of. Um, proteins are like the basic, the basic like chemicals of life. Like all the all of the chemical reactions that are are keeping us alive, they're all coordinated and orchestrated by proteins. Proteins are what do all of those cool things. And all proteins in our body are made up of these same 20 amino acids, just different orders and different lengths of, of, of chain. So of those 20 amino acids, nine are considered essential. So these are amino acids that we just can't make. We have to get them from food. Then the rest of them we can either make to some degree. So we still want to get them from food or we can totally make as much as we need. No big deal. So we call a food a complete protein if it has like good relative amounts of those nine essential amino acids. So all animal foods other than collagen are complete proteins. Um, and there are a few plant fruit foods that are complete proteins, like soy is a complete protein. Uh, I think hemp is, I believe, I, 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 hold please, I have a list in here. Complete plant <laughs> proteins include soy, like edamame, tofu, natto, and tempeh, buckwheat, quinoa, hemp, chia seed, and amaranth. It's actually kind of a short list. And it's really sad that wasn't already in my, my brain. So the reason why collagen is not a complete protein is because it has almost no tryptophan, uh, which is one of the essential amino acids. It's, that's not, that doesn't make it bad. So still talking about like protein in general and not necessarily about collagen if we are getting enough protein and we're getting it from a diversity of sources so we're not eating a, like a really restricted diet where we only are getting protein from a handful of foods um, we typically don't need to worry about complete versus incomplete proteins because amino acids are like not that hard to come by so just because collagen doesn't have enough tryptophan i mean we can get tryptophan from a banana like we don't it's not hard to get tryptophan from somewhere else okay so, so as long as we're getting our protein from a diversity of sources and we're getting enough we typically don't need to worry about complete versus versus incomplete uh even even on a plant-based diet so even a oh, okay. vegan, or vegan typically doesn't need to worry about amino acid imbalances provided that they're getting uh, enough protein from a, a wide range of sources. That's where like the classic combination of beans and rice come in. I think it's methionine or lysine that, um, you know, one has and the other one, you know, doesn't have, and they kind of complement each other to, to round out the collection of amino acids, but you don't even have to have that at the same meal. So if you have rice at one meal and beans at the other meal, like our, our body goes, aha, I got these amino acids. I got to wait for these ones. Okay. I got everything I need. I can make the thing. So, um, so provided the day is supplying all of the amino acids, like we're good. So we don't really see amino acid, um, like a deficiencies, like malnutrition due to not having enough of the, one of the amino acids it outside of, uh, like extreme malnourishment and starvation. So if you're getting enough protein and the protein comes from more than a small handful of foods, 
We don't have to worry about it. Typically, we're good. So typically... So not a big deal that collagen is not a a complete protein. So we can set that to the side. But like these collagen powders, I feel like are marketed to me all the time. And like, like what's the deal with them? Like, is it really that good? And are there other ways that we can get it if we don't want to like buy a collagen supplement or whatnot? Yeah. So uh, collagen is kind of legit cool. Um, but it's cool for kind of a different reason than I think a lot of the marketing is. So, um, what's cool about, so collagen is, uh, all of the, so collagen is a type of protein that's in our body. There's like 29 different types and collagen has kind of two different roles in, in the us. So it's either a structural protein. So like most of the protein in our bones is collagen, our, our joint tissue is mostly made out of collagen or it's like glue. So there's a lot of collagen in our skin. There's a lot of collagen in what's called uh, interstitial or connective tissue. So all of the things that are holding us, all of our cells together has a lot of collagen in it. So collagen is very cool. Um, It does a lot of really important roles. It's the most common protein in our entire bodies. And it has a really overall pretty simple uh, amino acid structure. So it's typically made of a glycine, then a hydroxyproline uh, or a proline and something else. So proline, proline, uh, glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, and then something, sometimes something else in there, but it causes this like spiral structure, which is how uh, collagen gets its like structural integrity from. So the three amino acids that collagen has in abundance, glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, are the amino acids that we need to make collagen. So when we eat collagen, we're getting the what we need to make collagen, but then we need the other nutrients that help with collagen formation. So like vitamin C is a necessary um, nutrient for making collagen. So that's another like thing to keep in mind. Like we, we, need, <laughs> we need to also be getting enough vitamin C so that our body can use the amino acids in collagen. But as I already said, if we're getting enough protein, we don't need to really worry about amino acid imbalances. Our bodies can make all of the things that it makes. So here's what's really extra cool about collagen. Whether you're eating it like a collagen peptide supplement or you're getting it from foods, like seafood's really high in collagen, anything kind of meat that you're eating off the bone, like chicken wings is high in collagen. Uh, any Like if you're eating chicken skin, that'll have some collagen. Um, bone broth, that the protein in broth, because it's the protein from bones and joint tissues is collagen. So there's food sources of of collagen. We don't need to have a a supplement, but however we get it, um, what happens in our digestive tract is we don't just absorb single amino acids. Um, So we break down proteins into amino acids. Those amino acids get absorbed into our bloodstream and then we use those amino acids to make the proteins that are us. But we can also absorb some what are called dipeptides, so that's two amino acids linked together. Some tripeptides, three amino acids linked together. If I had a third hand, this would be a much better visual. Or sometimes, sometimes quadripeptides. <laughs> so four amino acids linked together. So we don't have to like 100% break down a protein into individual amino acids to absorb them into our bloodstream. So typically, uh, we're still going to like use those. We're going to stick them into a protein. So what happens with collagen there's more studies definitely needed here, but this is where the science currently is at, is that whether we're eating it and breaking it down most of the way in our digestive tract, or we're getting it as a collagen peptide, which is kind of like pre, pre-digested a little bit for us because it's processed, the proline and hydroxyproline dipeptide. So those two amino acids stuck together, they get absorbed like that, like two, two, two together in our digestive tract. And it turns out, or at least this is where the science is right now, that that proline hydroxyproline is a really important signaling molecule that stimulates collagen synthesis in our bodies. So it's not as much about the raw materials as it is about the, the basically the fact that that proline hydroxyproline dipeptide is telling our bodies to use those raw materials to make collagen. So that's why there's like some pretty good studies showing that collagen does improve joint health in a variety of situations. There's less good studies showing that it can improve like 
skin and wrinkles and stuff like those are not quite as high quality as the joint um, studies and there's maybe some indication that it can reduce cardiovascular disease risk but that's very very preliminary so the the most rigorous like science that supports the health claims is the joint health stuff but it's very likely not just because of the raw materials in our bodies making the collagen it's because of that dye peptide. And here's what's cool. So I already mentioned vitamin C being really important for collagen synthesis. So we still want to make sure we're doing that. But also a really important stimulus for collagen synthesis is exercise. So they have studies where they're like, okay, we're going to give you this collagen supplement or this gelatin supplement, and it'll either have vitamin C or it won't. And we're going to measure collagen synthesis in your body. And we're going to stimulate that collagen synthesis by getting you to jump rope for three minutes or six minutes or whatever, right? That sounds awful. No, thanks. (laughs) I kind of like jumping rope. Um, But but so if we're looking to like maximize the benefits of taking a collagen supplement, first of all, you don't need the expensive one. Anyone will do. They're all going to have this dipeptide in them. Um, You don't need all the fancy extra ingredients. So you don't need like the adaptogens and the type, whatever collagen, like you don't need any of that. That's you good to know. Yeah, okay. like super whatever's the, the cheapest one. You can just buy gelatin. The gelatin is like not quite as broken down collagen. So you can make jello and get your collagen that way or make broth, bone broth. At that home. sounds way better than jumping rope. I'll do that. Okay. So, mm, okay. <laughs> then you're not going to like this next sentence because then I'm going to say, then make sure you're getting enough vitamin C because that's really important for our, our, our collagen synthesis. Orange jello. Got it. Check. <laughs> I don't know if that has any vitamin C in it. I'm doubting. Maybe if you make it with orange juice, but that's not going to be. use like one of those emergency packets to make your like gel. Okay, I'm going off script here, but like, I don't know. Like, There's a lot of stuff in those that's not just vitamin C though. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Anyways, okay, eat my orange. Eat, eat your my jello and go and for a jello. walk essentially, right? Yes, and do okay. some kind of activity. I can do that. That's where I, I was getting. That. It doesn't have to be jump rope. But um, physical activity is really important as a stimulus for collagen synthesis. And and that's one of the reasons why being active uh, is associated with stronger bones in our age, as well as younger looking skin. I love that. I love that. Okay. So basically, if you're eating like a Nutrivore where you're really getting a diversity of foods, you don't actually have to like super stress about this because you kind of have your bases covered when you're doing that. But if you want to focus in vitamin C, collagen, take a walk, that sounds easy enough. So can you tell us where we can learn more about like protein? Cause that was fascinating and like more about collagen and I guess vitamin C too. Like, where can we learn more about that? So I already referenced uh, my book because it has so much really good information (laughs) in it. It actually has a whole section on how collagen can be beneficial for joint pain. It's, I'm going to show it. It's called, it's, it's called blurry, blurry book. It's, (laughs) it's, come on, come on, focus, focus. It's really refusing to focus. Joint pain? Try eating more collagen. It's called joint pain? Try eating more collagen. And I know you can read that. Um, Yep. (laughs) You you don't need to go get your eyes checked. That is just my camera refusing to (laughs) focus on anything. Uh, And it actually goes through all of the really cool sciences showing that it really can legit uh, improve um, joint health in a variety of situations. Um, And here we go. Other collagen-rich foods include gelatin, Awful, which I intentionally did not mention earlier. Uh, any meat you eat off of bone or that includes skin and fish and shellfish. So I, I love that. I remembered them all. Um, so uh, I go, I talk about protein, how much protein we need, complete proteins uh, in in the book, and as well as the the benefits of balanced macronutrients. So like the relative ratio of protein, carbohydrates, and fat being within what's called the accepted macronutrient distribution ranges why that's good um, rather than like high or low anything kind of being in that happy medium middle but the other cool thing that i do in the book is like examine exactly how one nutrient benefits one particular health condition so with joint pain we're talking about not just like sports related joint problems but also like osteoarthritis so um how 
getting more of that particular nutrient can improve that condition. And then there's a really cool appendix where I look at, uh, I actually just summarize all of the nutrients that are linked to 120 different health conditions and symptoms. So if you don't find like specifically your condition in the, the main narrative of the book, chances are really good it's in that table. Yeah, no, great reference book, great reference book. Thanks, Dr. Sarah. No problem.